हेलो फ्रेंड्स आई एम डॉक्टर दीपक गर्ग आई एम एन ऑर्थोपेडिक सर्जन एंड टुडे वी विल डिस्कस पोस्टीरियर स्टेबलाइज वर्सेस क्रोसियर ट्रेनिंग टी आर दैट मीन्स पी एस वर्सेज सी आर टोटल नी रिप्लेसमेंट फर्स्ट वी शुड नो अबाउट द बेसिक बायोमैकेनिक्स इन साइड द नी जॉइंट फीमर मूव इन ऑल द थ्री एक्सिस ड्यूरिंग नी रेंज ऑफ मोशन एक्सरसाइजेस देर इज अ रोटेशन मूवमेंट दैट मीन्स द देर इज अ रोटेशन मूवमेंट ड्यूरिंग द फ्लेक्शन एंड द एक्सटेंशन there is a sliding movement that means the femur is rotating and sliding backwards over the tibia actually this is not a sliding movement this is a roll back movement that means we can see from the diagram that this ball is rolling down over the wedge that means the contact area the surface area in contact with the wedge is changing with time similarly the contact area of the wedge with the ball is changing with time so there is no constant surface that is in contact so similarly the femur rolls back over the tibia there is no constant surface in contact so there is the wear and tear of the cartilage is decreased knee flexion occur around a varying transverse axis from the diagram we can see that this is a lateral condyle this is the medial condyle and these are the transverse axis during the flexion this is a Uh, transverse axis when this uh, surface is in contact this is the transverse axis when this surface is in contact and we can see the distance of the transverse axis over the medial condyle is much lesser as compared to the lesser uh, the lateral condyle that means the medial condyle is moving much less as compared to the lateral condyle that means the translation in the lateral condyle is much more and there is a rotation of the lateral femoral condyle and this phenomena is called as medial pivoting of the knee joint this medial pivoting is due to the geometry of the knee and ligament restraints geometry means the shape of the condyles and the uh, shape of the meniscus and the other medial and the lateral collateral ligaments if we look at a normal knee in terms of posterior translation of the femoral condyles with the acl intact the medial condyles moves only 2 mm and the lateral condyles move around 21 mm that means there is a huge difference in the movement medial condyle is almost fixed that's why we call medial pivoting and the lateral condyle is moving around 21 mm the same knee with the deficit acl the movement of the medial condyle becomes 5 mm and the lateral condyle becomes 17 mm still there is a medial pivoting after the acl this is a diagram showing this is the medial side this is the lateral side of the tibia and this lines are showing the movement of the femoral condyle we can see that the femur uh, femoral condyles are moving much less on the medial side and there is a big movement on the lateral side this pattern of medial pivoting of the knee joint explains external rotation of the tibia on femur during extension and this phenomena is called as screw home mechanism now let's compare the cruciate retaining versus posterior stabilized knees in the cruciate retaining so we do not cut the pcl pcl is intact so both the tibial tray insert and the femoral component will have space posteriorly for the pcl and we can see that there is a space between the two condyles of the femur posteriorly and in the posterior stabilized knee we keep cut the pcl so there is should be something which will replace the function of the pcl that is by the post and the cam mechanism we can see that this is a post and there is a cam mechanism that will replace the function of the posterior cruciate ligament let's compare the differences between the cr and the ps knee in cruciate retaining there is a effective roll back as we have already seen the effective roll back means it will replicate the normal knee biomechanics and there should be some medial pivoting the lateral side should be moving more as compared to the medial side and with the recent uh, inserts with the specifically with the deep disc insert in the cruciate retaining this is replicating more an, like a natural knee so there is a more effective roll back in cruciate retaining uh, implants in ps there is a more uniform roll back that means both the lateral and the medial side are moving uh, almost the same 
and in CR proprioception is present because we are not cutting the PCL patient has the proprioception and this is a very big difference and whereas in PS there is no proprioception but there is a difficult gap balancing in CR that's why we say that only an experienced surgeon should go for a CR knee because the, it is very difficult to balance the gap both the extension and the flexion gap because of the joint line alteration is not tolerated because of the intact PCL and uh, it is it become very difficult to balance the collateral ligaments whereas in PS knee the gap balancing becomes very easy because when we release the PCL the flexion gap increases by 4 to 6 mm and the extension gap increases by 2 mm so imagine we are not cutting the PCL so there, there will be and we are taking the same amount of cut in the tibia and the femur so automatically the both the flexion and the extension gap will be tight in CR knee so if both the flexion and the extension gap are tight we may need to release the PCL partially so as to achieve the good flexion and the extension gap and that may lead to later on late complete tear of the PCL and the late instabilities may happen so if the tightness is too much then there can be excessive rollback and because the tightness is too much the femur condyle will, ha will have a greater friction over the insert so there will be high contact stresses and high wear and tear of the insert and there are chances of high chances of late failure and there sometimes there can be paradoxic forward translation which is not acceptable and we may need to resect the PCL completely if valgus or varus is more than 15 degree associated with the flexion contracture because we will not be able to balance the flexion and the extension gap in these scenarios now if we look at the posterior stabilized knee where we cut the PCL there can be sometimes patellar clunk syndrome that means painful palpable audible clunk of the patella which when the knee moves from the flexion to the extension this clunk is mostly because of the nodule formation in the proximal pole of the patella just uh, inferior just uh, posterior to the patella when uh, during the flexion and when we extend this nodule causes the painful palpable audible clunk and uh, sometimes there are incidences of tibial post breakage which sometimes need revision surgeries if we look at the loosening rate this is equal in both the cases let's look at the tibial tray in uh, cruciate retaining cases we aim the slope to be 5 to 7 degrees a slight increase in the slope increases the tension on PCL and facilitate flexion if we increase the slope too much then there can be chances of injury to PCL and that may lead to instability in flexion and if we look at the PS tibial tray then the recommended slope is lesser which is 0 to 3 degree increasing the slope increases the flexion gap with risk of significant instability in flexion and if we increase the slope too much then that, that may lead to the impingement of the post cam mechanism and we have uh, already seen the complication the tibial post fracture so my opinion about whether we should go for a CR knee or a PS knee if you are experienced enough for a CR knee we should choose a CR knee and uh, if there is a too much deformity of valgus varus or flexion contracture then electively we should choose, choose the PS knee because that then th there will be very difficult to balance the flexion and the extension gap so this was about the PS and the CR knees thank you guys thank you very much